Raising money for children, one face call at a time. Can I save it myself? No, my, my, can we, uh, Can I save it myself? I was told if we raise over $2,000, we could get Don to shave his beard. That's awesome. Don's beard has its own Facebook page. It does. <laughs> so let, let me ask the first question because I never get to ask it. Who in here is attending their first Mac Fest? Raise your hands. Yeah! <laughs> Make a 
train. Oh, I'll hear it. Right so, all right, the first thing I'm going to do is sort of pick up where I left off. Uh, last year at closing ceremonies, this guy knows, I uh, had a little story about griefers. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I start with making sure people know how to behave, and then, and then I get into the good stuff. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, griefers are kids who go online and piss people off in online video games as a hobby, like as a regular thing. And I'm going to attempt to talk about them without sarcasm right now. It's very difficult. Um, we, we had some guys here last year that one of them's been back on staff for a while. Yeah, yeah, you like it. Uh, and uh, he's a griefer, he hangs around with his griefer crew, he's very proud of it, whatever. I am not happy with that. So, I, I messed with their badges, and that's a long story, but I, I didn't do much. I just sort of toyed around with them a little bit. My intention was to see whether they had the sense of humor that they claimed to have. It will surprise no one that they did not appreciate the irony. <laughs> uh, this guy got a video of me at closing ceremonies last year, uh, you know, telling the story, and it's the most hated video I've ever seen on YouTube, because the only people who watch it are fans of the griefing crew. And it's just, like, it's like seriously like 500 comments of, like, you have no idea how to troll. Trolls are supposed to piss people off. And you're just a fucking pink-haired faggot living in your mom's basement virgin murder, like just going on. <laughs> the irony is completely lost on them. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the point with this is when, when I get a situation like that, like what do you do? What do you do with a griefer at your event? We can't just ban them. It doesn't work. And that's sort of contrived, like we don't really have authority over what they do online. And I didn't want to just ignore it completely and pretend they didn't exist. So I, I had a little fun with them and, you know, I was sort of hoping they would appreciate it. Uh, they didn't at the time, but a couple weeks later I talked to the one guy that I actually kind of knew and, long story short, <laughs> I got through to him and, and he quit his grieving. He's done. And uh, I make a big effort to set MAGFest up as a place where anybody can get away with anything. That's my goal. Woo! Woo! That's, uh, that's, a, that's a very absolute way to put it, and we can't actually get away with anything. But we, 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 we do what we can to try and make sure that we know where the boundaries are for the hotel and for, you know, for the galleries and all this stuff, and then we, we set up boundaries within that. But when it comes down to it, it, it's sort of a matter of judgment what people are allowed to get away with or not. And you can go off and do something goofy and you get in trouble for it, and then how much trouble you get in is kind of up to us. Uh, and in the case of a griefer, it's just an easy way to explain. And there's, you know, everybody screws with their friends every once in a while. They have a little fun playing pranks or whatever. That's fine. Everybody like gets pissed off and takes it out on people every once in a while. You're just like, okay, this sucks. I'm gonna go online and rant or whatever the hell. That's fine. People do that. But when you get to the point where you are just deliberately going out and trying to hurt people on a regular basis as your hobby, to the point where you can call yourself a griefer, you're just a bad person. It's just <laughs> over at that point. Spawn campers are fine, man. Learn how to spawn. <laughs> Play a better game or something. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we get a lot of cases every year where somebody's doing something ridiculous and the hotel or our, our internal security guys or whatever come to us and I end up being the guy that has to make a final judgment on whether we're going to like let this guy leave with the cops, or they're okay to stick around. And last year, I love this place. Last year was our first year here, and one of the first things that happened 
was the first night I was going to bed and the security guys told me that somebody was knocking down exit signs. I was like, not again. Like every other year this happens. Somebody gets really drunk and exit signs are really shiny. <laughs> And they, and they go they go prancing down the hallway, knocking them out of the ceiling, except they cost like $500 a piece for the hotel, and the hotel gets very, very mad. In this hotel, they have security cameras that work. And four hours later, they had the guy, and we just sent him away with the cops. That's the So you guys know, there are security cameras in the hallways that actually work. And in the hotel rooms, somebody's name and ID and credit card is on that room. So anywhere in the hotel space, if you get really drunk and do something really stupid, you're gonna get nailed for it. Please don't do that. You're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Get away with a bit more, but the the basic rule is don't piss off the hotel. If you don't piss off the hotel, you're basically good. Woo! But the rule for anything within Magfest space is if you have a question about it, check in with security. Like if you were gonna walk around on giant bouncy stilts or something, which you know we did last year. Check in with security. We'll check with the hotel, and you know we'll probably let you do it. The hotel was cool with that, by the way. Yeah, and then, and then they weren't because somebody sprained their knee. Yeah, but uh, you, can, you can get away with a lot as long as you're cool to people and you're alright about it. So do me a favor and if you're trying to do anything wacky, check in with security first. We'll probably be fine with it. If you get caught doing something stupid, just be cool about it and, and we'll be fine. Somebody's phone's ringing. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that might be wrong. Yeah. Um, well, actually, uh, Steph, do you want to take a shot and tell them about guidebook? Because that's important and is, is sort of relevant to... Everybody know about guidebook?
columns that the hotel has with big touch screens on it have the schedule in a slightly annoying format, but it works. And then guidebook is really the preferred way to go. I think I still have, I have to
things need to change. I'm getting really frustrated working with you. There's a lot of people that are getting frustrated. We've got to do something about this. This is very important. And uh, Brendan was, was busy at another convention at the, at the moment. And you know, I had a talk that was just like, OK, look, this is serious business. Like, either we have to change things, or Manifest is collapsing, or I'm quitting, or whatever. And uh, hey, Brendan, he's not paying any attention to you. It's typical. You, you remember our phone conversation? Do you remember what you said? Do you, do you want to tell them? You'll get them later. Um, I, uh, I, I told Paul that the most important thing was that Magka succeeded and we remained friends. And uh, oh, that so sweet. is what Magfest is about oh. for me. This guy who just walked in here, Dom, 
he is, he is the guy running MAGFest currently. Well, he's too busy to listen. Uh, he, is, he has seriously been working like 80 hour work weeks for the last year and a half or so working on MAGFest. He's put more into MAGFest than any single person ever has uh, by far. I've, I've been watching all the work that people have put into MAGFest over the years and he's, he's got me beat, he's got Brendan beat, he's got everybody beat. He has been kicking serious, serious ass, getting this all together and doing the nasty, boring, horrible work that nobody else wants to do. Tell them about taxes, Dom. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you guys need accounting help, he can help you now because he's been doing financial stuff for the last, last like nine months. That's what I'd like to say. I have an MBA now, the MAGFest Business and Administration. So. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, if you just YouTube MAGFest supporter badge, you can see some of the interesting stuff. So this is not just for cloaks. This actually works, and it's pretty sweet. Uh, we've got uh, uh, stuff from Blizzard, signed by the development team. Uh, 
We've got Mr. Panaria, a collector's edition, signed by the dev team. A couple of posters as well. We have... It's signed. Okay, so this one, are you guys ready for this? Yes. From Valve. A portal gun signed by the dev team. To uh, Mad Gear downstairs, Carlson, no pipe, all these important games. He's awesome. He donated a Famicom Disk System copy of Castlevania 1 that we're going to get signed. <laughs> that is in fact signed by the Earth Bound Papas. <laughs> that makes way more sense to me than it should. <laughs> um, we've got a, a whole ton of items this year. Steve has kicked ass. Uh, Media Molecule sent us today, uh, what was it? Uh, like, original artwork from uh, Olympic Planet, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Oh, the Tomb Raider. Yeah. Okay, so we have a skateboard coming out. That's uh, that's a Tomb Raider skateboard that was uh, donated to us that they had they had to wait uh, for their dev team. That's pretty cool. The other thing that we're doing this year that I think a couple of you might know about is uh, table flipping for charity. All right. So this is essentially the dumbest idea we've ever had. Wait, wait, you just said. Uh, <laughs> it, it was Ryan Miner and Rubel. <laughs> so these guys were like, we should do this thing where we raise money for charity by flipping tables. And I was like, you're a fucking genius. Was, yes, yes, we need to flip tables in rage and raise money for sick kids. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we've got, we're, we're going to be doing this from 4 to 6 uh, today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Uh, down in Expo Hall E. So tell all your friends, and we're gonna have a whiteboard. We haven't quite worked out on the prices yet, but we've got stuff like streamers, confetti, multiple sizes of tables, uh, cornflakes, uh, bowls, plates, silverware, cups. Um, and a big guy with a beard. Yeah, so I have, I have, I have already decided that uh, for a thousand dollar donation, I will voluntarily lay on the table and you can flip me the hell off. Oh, right. Oh, so, 
Uh, because uh, of the unfortunate loss of our good friend, the Twinkie, we do have a box of Twinkies that will be auctioned. <laughs> You're signing a box of Twinkies for charity. Uh, I think we just gave a couple people a heart attack in the audience. Please wait until after you've eaten the Twinkies to have the heart attack. <laughs> that way you can make sure it happens. Yeah, if anybody needs blood pressure medication, I got that now. <laughs> <laughs> my heart almost exploded two weeks ago. That was pretty cool. But now I'm here, so my heart didn't explode. Thumbs up. <laughs> Apparently having double blood pressure is a bad thing. <laughs> Careful with those energy drinks, kids. This is a PSA brought to you by Fat Kids of America. <laughs> What's that? I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Everyone wave to that guy that's sitting down right now. Yeah, everybody say hi, John. Uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting some people, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got John St. John right over there. Yeah! yeah. Guys from Finky are here. Oh. Yeah. 
and you can go check out what they've been working on. They're going to be there, you know, manning their tables to explain things and have people try out their games. And uh, that is really what MAGFest is all about, is people who are doing interesting stuff on their own with, with games and game-related stuff. So I'm really excited to have that happen. Uh, the other thing that I do want to mention, because people have no idea what it is, does anybody here know about the demo scene or know what a demo party is? Okay, all right, some of you. Um, the, the quick explanation is these are basically video game programmers who don't go all the way to making a video game. They just make demonstrations of the like insane graphical stuff that they can do. And it's this whole subculture that's been around since like the early 80s, but most people haven't heard of it. And a lot of video game programmers like, all right, you guys are familiar with Epic? Previously, Epic Mega Games. Previously, a demo group. That's how Epic got their start. They were a demo group. Uh, we have a demo party happening here. It's in, I think, one of the Chesapeake rooms. Yeah, it's in one of the Chesapeake rooms in the back, one of the main conference rooms there. It's on the map. Uh, and it's just going to be full of programmer guys like trying to come up with cool light shows and things. And it's really interesting stuff if you're into the technical side of graphics and game programming at all. So, check that out. Oh, yeah, we have an autograph space, and that's more just sort of a PSA. Uh, all the way in the back corner of the expo hall, uh, there's a whole space dedicated to autographs, so whenever any of our celebrity guests are going to be doing autographs, that's actually on the schedule, and it's set up to be right after their panels, so like when, well, generally. Like when, when John St. John here or Ego Raptor or somebody does a panel, after their panel they're going to have an autograph session that's down in the, in the expo hall so that we don't crowd up other places. And after that, like, PSA on that, when the autographs aren't happening for four to six table flipping is... <laughs> Are we doing it at the same time? Uh, there, there is some bleed over. I'm pretty sure that John is way okay with signing autographs to people arranged flipping tables. <laughs> I picked him to overlap specifically because I figured he'd be like, oh, right. We just sort of drift off and usually we just kind of go, eh, well, it's... And then you guys sit for it and listen to us and ramble for it. Call it 